In this lecture, we continue our discussion of evaluating our corporate strategy by looking at business unit strength within the various industries that we're evaluating for attractiveness. In other words, you're trying to get an entire scope of what the opinion, what the options are in terms of industries that one might, one might choose to diversify into, as well as the players in that industry and how their various business units, other diversified companies, how their various business units how well they compete in these various industries, and if we have a player in those industries, a business also, how we are competing with our business unit in the context of those various industries. It's a very similar um, process that we talked about before. You want to look at the business unit, its market strength, its relative competitive costs, its cost structure, its ability to match or beat rivals, its brand image, how well its brand is, is known vis-a-vis competitors, other resources and capabilities that that business unit might have. These could be our business units, they could be competitive business units, uh, business units that are in other diversified companies or even standalone businesses. You look at how well that business has a strategic fit with its parents. In our case, if it's our business unit with our parent company, if it's with a, another diversified company, does that business unit have an unfair advantage? Perhaps, for example, it's in the oil and gas industry, as we were describing, and part one of their, their, their parent company also owns oil wells and refining capabilities, uh, discovery and the like, and can get that resource no matter what happens in world markets. And some other industry players don't have that. That might be something to consider. The bargaining leverage they have with key suppliers related to what I was just saying about basically owning some of the resources that are necessary. Some players might have that. Others might not. And so the relative profitability the company might have vis-a-vis -vis its comparison. So using vis-a-vis uh, -vis its competitors. So using relative market share, you can measure the strength of the various players. Someone who has a large market share is a stronger player. Generally, um, that's usually a little bit more uh, competitive or more um, uh, uh, analytically uh, robust than having simply percent, because you may have several players that dominate the marketplace, um, and other players are relatively small. And so having being the first or the second of a, of a, of a group of, of, of many might be a, a different, uh, tell you a different story than having a very large market share in terms of percentage. So you generally want to use relative market share, something like a, a ratio of the market share to the total share. Um, or to the industry's largest player, for example, you half the size, a third of the size, whatever, a way to think about the concentration when you think about market share. So in a manner similar to what we did last time, and you may guess that when our, in our next lecture we'll graph, we'll use these to do a little bit of a graphic analysis as well, um, you would look at how important the market share is, how important is the cost structure, how important are the various factors that we described, profitability relative to competitors and the like, how those business units play out vis-a-vis -vis those comparisons um, for various industries, a business, one business in, in a certain industry, another business in a different industry or in your same industry or whatever. And you would lay out, again, with a group of experts, you can get, you can use a consensus theory. What it basically says is when you have independent decisions by experts, you have a stronger outcome or a more robust outcome than what an individual might think. So this is good for planning activity. You have a team, your operating team for a business, your strategy development team, whatever, for an organization. We'll sit there and, and, and talk about these various businesses and play this out and come up with a consensus view of what these numbers are or a view that comes from the averages of everyone's perspective or whatever. And it's a good way to understand collectively what the, what the lay of the land is. First, as we talked about in the last lecture, from the attractiveness in the industries, and in this lecture, the various players in those industries and how they compete within the industries that we're considering doing some of our analysis in. So we look at those um, various perspectives. And then we say, let's map this. It's called the nine cell matrix, high, medium, low, high, medium, low, in terms of the industry attractiveness and then the competitive strength or the market positions of those players. So you can see in some cases, you have organizations that, that have a very uh, weak position in the market, and they also have a relatively weak, um, the industry is relatively weak. Uh, 
doesn't take a genius to think those are the sorts of industries that you don't want to play in. You have a relatively weak player in a relatively unattractive market. Those are areas that you don't want to spend your time. And then you might have some where you're moderately attractive market and you're doing moderately well. That, in this particular case, it shows up as, as business C and industry C, the purple ones that are going down the, the diagonal. But then you might also have very attractive industries that are growing fast, all those various factors we came up with, they're growing fast. And they also, you also have a very strong position in those markets. Uh, those are often called stars. And if they're profitable and they're generating a lot of cash flow, they're called cash cows under those scenarios. And so you're at, you have situations where when you look out and you, you evaluate your own portfolio and you find industries that are attractive and you have a very strong player, that is a home run. You might have immediately, moderately attractive industries where you have a strong player. Not as good, but still you have a strong player in a moderately attractive industry. So this is how you can start to think about where your portfolio fits when you think about all the individual players you have. So you can start to evaluate if your resources are being allocated in the way, the most appropriate way that you think or that you are hopeful will give you the best returns in the long run, the best returns for yourself and your shareholders. Um, in the next lecture here, we'll talk about the fit between these businesses. You understand the industries, you understand how the various businesses in the portfolio fit within the industry. Now let's talk about how businesses can, can uh, have a stronger position vis-a-vis -vis fit across the various, various businesses within an industry or even across industries. And that's what we'll talk about 